know what it is. Yeah. So those are the three sites. Um, none from Rancho La Brea, unfortunately. Nobody's been able to get DNA out of here yet. Um, John Southen, uh, the, the PI who does all the radiocarbon for Rancho La Brea, thinks that it will be possible one day, but <coughs> excuse me, it's a problem that has to be worked on by a chemist, and they have to like do serious things to to cleave those uh, radio or those um, DNA atoms from the from the other things in there, all the tar and everything. Are there yeah. any evidence of people, or did people just avoid that trap? Um, there are no evidence of people. That's a good thing because the BLM would just kick us right on out of there if there were people. Um, so there are no evidence of people. Evidently, when they first excavated in 1974, um, people found arrowheads and things like that on the top. So clearly there were people in the area dropping things in there, but mm. no people went in there. And then uh, last year, we had a member of the Crow Nation come out and give us a blessing. The medicine man came out and did that. Um, and he told us the um, tribal backstory on the cave, and basically it's like a creation story for the cave. And the story was that there was this great warrior um, who went out and basically uh, went to this giant bison mouth, and this nasty bison had like swallowed all these people, and the warrior took his stick and he like put it in the bison's mouth and he jumped into the bison's mouth, um, and then saved all the people, and then basically said nobody go into the bison's mouth again, and the bison's mouth was the cave. So we think that it was National Trap Cave. So I think people knew not to go near there and fall in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you're excavating, I know you said that earlier excavations, they seem to have just dug like a big pit right yeah. to the center. Mm -hmm. Did you try and go in layer by layer? Uh, yeah, so that's what we do. When we, we go out to the side, and basically we go down layer by layer by layer by layer, and we sort of excavate each layer sequentially so that we have good sediment, sedimentary data um, and we can sort of get a good idea of where the layers are. Unfortunately, the, the layers in the cave are not straight, so you can't like go all the way around and see the same layer. Um, they do this, and like we have to piece them together. It turns out uh, the natural trap cave is a sinkhole. It was formed by a sinkhole. It turns out there were more sinkholes underneath, and periodically they just fell in and they brought all the sediment with it. So the layers are totally uneven and we basically had to go around and piece them together um, using you know, different components of the layers, different colors of the layers to figure out uh, what time periods are on which wall of the cave. Yeah. So that jumble of bones, are you guys mapping that? Or? We are. We have, uh, we had um, in 2016, um, we did um, what is it? a total station. We took total station data, so we've got three-dimensional point data for each fossil that we mapped out in 2016. Turns out we didn't know what we were doing. All the data came out crappy. So I actually paid someone to come out in 2017 who is a surveyor, and they took some of the same points we did. We had luckily we had like stationary points that were still there, and then he used those to uh, fix all our data from 2016, and now we have this beautiful three-dimensional map of fossils. Yeah. Did they use LIDAR for that? No, they did not use LIDAR for that. We did have somebody come in and do LIDAR. So we've had LIDAR done on the cave, but the total station is not LIDAR. It's basically like a three-dimensional point being shot in from this like tripod that has a, that has like a prism on top of it. Yeah. Is this very similar to the one that's in Australia that has that pit where animals fell in? Something like that. I actually don't know that cave, so oh. I can't really comment. Um, it might be. I mean, uh, there are there are pitfall caves all over the world where yeah. there are fossils. There's one that um, has like thousands of them that fell down and it's like 70 feet deep or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it might be. I mean, there's other pitfall traps in, <coughs> in North America too, where they have different species than what we have here. But um, yeah, I don't I don't know anything about the Australian cave. Oh yeah, no, you can go down to anything. So basically what you do is it's like, I don't know if you guys seen them on the side of the road, they've got like the stack of raw or whatever, right? <laughs> like they have this big prism on it. And then they have, um, and then they have this tripod that sets up and basically you can, the, the, the staff has like a point that comes down real low and they have different sizes of those. Um, so they have like a really tiny one. So if you have a teeny tiny fossil, it will actually shoot it into like centimeters. 
So yeah, you can get good data. On big bones, we took like two points or three points depending upon the shape of the bone. And on little bones, we just took one point. So we have good spatial data for all, where all those bones are, are lying. Yeah. I was looking online and I saw something called the Direwolf Project, uh, where they're trying to maybe bring back some sort of breed. It can't be an exact direwolf, but something similar. Oh, yeah, no. It's not, I didn't know. So those people don't have direwolf DNA, so there's no way they could bring back yeah. a direwolf. Yeah, they, they, they think um, it's something like that. But right, yeah. no, it's, it's totally fake. Um, <laughs> sorry. It's totally fake, and what I mean by that is, like, they're trying to do this with, like, domesticated dogs yeah, or something. Yeah. They're trying to create a dog that looks like a dire wolf, yeah. right? That looks like the wolves from Game of Thrones, basically. It's like, oh, we're gonna make this giant wolf dog, blah, 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 blah. That's what it is. It's right. all, it's all modern. It's all like domesticated dogs. Yeah, it has yeah. nothing to do with an actual dire wolf. Breeding, yeah. It's just breeding, yeah. Yeah. Somebody's asked me about that before and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, as far as like the numbers in your collection, are you talking about hundreds, thousands, hundreds, tens of thousands, Thousands right, now. So thousands right now. So Where each year we collect about a thousand specimens. Oh. And that was just with like uh, a like two to four week field season, okay, depending upon which it. year we were out there. So the the collection in Kansas has tens of thousands, or if not hundreds of thousands of specimens. So all of our specimens are actually going to the University of Wyoming, which is what I said before when I meant to say Kansas. Um, so we have an agreement with Wyoming that we're sending all our fossils there. Because Kansas didn't want them, we were like, all right, we'll give them to somebody else. <laughs> so, where's you have a question? <coughs> the American lion, the genetic data was saying that there's like two different species. Do you think, like, is the morphology showing that they're different from, like, so the it's shown that, like, the ones in Alaska are different from the ones here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, I think that there is actually a cave lion and an American lion. And I think that's what they, I think that's what they Yeah, they had like a Beringian lion or right. whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think yeah, yeah. the Beringian lion is a cave lion. Yeah. Is, is a cave lion. Uh, and then the one from Natural Trap, we said was an American lion. Okay. Mm. Um, but I don't, I mean, I, it seems like what they showed was that there was a pattern of uh, a big a lion coming over from Eurasia, yeah. stopping in Beringia, sort of settling there, and then uh, something continued down to North America, which then became the American lion. So I think they're all related. I think they're, I think that's basically just the pattern that they followed. But, but it, yeah, I mean, the Beringian lion could be distinct from the American lion. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. So you were talking about the, the bison or the, the ox coming down from North America and the, and the wolves following them, mm -hmm. and then the uh, buffalo coming, but the hunters then also and ranchers putting a bounty on the wolves also affect the population of wolves? Um, it it would, but it wouldn't have, I mean, it might have an effect on um, on, on natural selection of wolves in, in the regard that people probably shoot the largest wolves. Mm -hmm. um, but I would guess that that, you know, I would say wolves were, wolves were pretty common until after the bison were, were mm -hmm. killed off. So um, the wolves that we're getting from the 1800s probably hadn't had a whole lot of evolution uh, pre-human. Um, or post-human, rather. They were mostly pre-human or pre-European um, hmm. wolves. Now, how long would it take the, the, the Smilodon to change you said, from the warm climate to a colder uh, climate? Well, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how long it would have taken them to change, but um, we've, got, we've got thousands of years in between. So, so natural selection could definitely happen within thousands of years. Hmm. And we don't know whether it's uh, a plastic effect, meaning that it's environmentally mediated, or if it's actually a genetic change. We don't, we can't distinguish between those two things. That was one last question, sorry. Sure. Uh, I like, uh, Marisa Anton's one of my favorite paleo artists. So mm -hmm. are, are these more recent illustrations going to be published somewhere in print, or? Um, so I think they're all, so the ones that I've used in my talk are all available online. That's why I got them. So he put them up on his website. Um, Would it be like another book, like the saber tooth book that he did? Oh, he did a dog book too. Yeah, I got that one. So, um, but I don't know what his plans are for more books. Oh. Yeah. Thought I'd ask. Cool. Thanks.